Happy Sunday, everybody. Today we're looking at the scaletrains.com tier 4 Jeevos with sound. All right, so we're just going to jump right into this. We kind of already did a bit of a visual overview in my previous review of just the DCC, DCC ready engines. And uh, so we won't take quite as long looking at that with these. We'll just kind of do a quick drive by of each of them, uh, get a quick look at uh, some of the details and some of the um, specific changes between the engines. There are specific details for each road number or each road name that are a little bit different between them. So we'll take a moment to look at that. But Really nothing new here. The detail on these is just as good as the DC, DCC engines. So uh, really what I want to get into after we do that is some of the programming features, some of the stuff you need to know before you jump into these, and, and a little bit more of the, the finite details about programming these to make them a little more usable um, for other consisting, other than just with other scale trains engines. So we'll get to that. And uh, then we'll talk price to performance and why I'm a little bit uh, on the fence about these. Not that they're not wonderful engines because, uh, spoiler, they're probably nicer engines than the DC ones. It's just the, unfortunately, how good the uh, the new, like, actual Tier 4 Jeevas are when it comes to their to their sound. So we'll talk about that when we get there, but let's just go ahead and... Zoom in and take it some take a look at some of the specific details that we have on each of these engines. This BNSF is the last one that I have picked up. It has the least amount of runtime of all of these, and uh, honestly, I have been looking for a BNSF for quite a while, and I finally came across one. That's how I ended up with the DCC Ready one that I put the decoder in and. Uh, had those other issues if you want to check that out look at my other review but this one has some differences compared to some of the others again with the scale trans jivos you get unmatched quality when it comes to the uh to the detail that you uh that you have on these you know you have your mu hoses the you know the coupler locks all that kind of stuff this particular engine is a little bit newer than the others, I believe, because it has the black couplers. Um, it might also have a version 5 decoder in it. I'm not sure. I haven't actually done any programming on this one yet. But with this one not being weathered, you can really see some of the nice detail. The the trucks on this, it has the, the BNSF um, high-tractive effort trucks that are kind of their thing. The uh, pin handrails and steps, again, are awesome. I love to see that. The ditch lights on this are functioning and are very bright. That's also something that's great. And all of the grab handles on this are just wonderful detail. I did not, I don't believe I brought it up, and it is difficult to see on camera, but there is actually a rear view mirror attached uh, right below the sunshade there. Awesome detail. Forgot to bring that up in the last review. And of course, the decal work on this is unmatched. They are absolutely gorgeous, and Scale Trains has done an awesome job with this. A little bit of in-cab detail, and the BNSF antennas up top there, different from any of the others. The other thing that this has that some of the other ones don't is the angled exhaust. You can actually see some of the exhaust pipe sticking up there. Cool little detail, and it is prototypically accurate, so... That's awesome. I will complain like I always do that I hate the couplers on these, but I will say that the black couplers that came on this engine do actually couple a little bit better to all of the range of my couplers. Accumate, uh, microtrains, microtrains knockoffs, that type of thing. So cool. Just wanted to show that engine off a bit. So this one is kind of one of those pride of my collections type engines. I found this not really knowing what it was, but this is a demo engine. Um, this is the 2022 version. Uh, 
the 2015 I have in DCC. Uh, I showed it in the last review, but this one has some interesting changes on it that uh, make it a really cool addition and something that I probably won't get rid of. This is more than likely going to be a permanent mainstay on my layout. Uh, again, just like all the others, excellent detail, a prototypically correct antenna set, and lots of little handrails up there. I don't know if you can see that right behind the cab there, but there is a small little handrail up there. Pretty awesome little detail. Grill work on this is fantastic, and they do, uh, they, they must wash it just a little bit because you do get a sense of depth um, in there. So the, <clears throat> the back of this has a different type of exhaust. I honestly have not had time to go through and figure out what they're actually showing with this. It is slightly different on this engine. Must be something to do with the prototype. Maybe they're testing something. Um, but the exhaust system is different and it has a totally different horn back here. And <clears throat> when we get to the, uh, the electronic decoder information, this has a directional horn that changes depending on the direction that you are running the engine, which makes for a really cool detail and kind of a talking point on, on your layout. Uh, other than that, the thing's pretty standard, very simple paint job. The one thing about it is you definitely can see all of the, the minute detail in all of the door panels and whatnot. So good engine for showing off that. And honestly, one of my favorites. It just is kind of an awesome talking point to have on your layout. Um, this is one of the first two engines that I got. The UP and the CSX I got as a pair. And I've been testing them for the longest amount of time. They have some serious runtime on them at this point. And... Uh, Honestly, I have not in the past been a fan of, I believe this is considered the dark future paint scheme for CSX. And this engine has changed my mind a little bit. Uh, it's a little more dull and the color isn't as vibrant as, as normal. And I kind of like that on a freight engine. It just, it has a nicer look than the other CSX engines that I've seen with this type of paint job. So I'm coming around to it. I definitely like this more than the other ones I've seen. Uh, not a whole lot different on this engine. It is pretty much standard for most tier four GVOs that you would see out there. It's got the squared off uh, exhaust, uh, mid-mounted, you know, horns, and standard uh, standard trucks. This does not have the the heavy ballast tr trucks like you're used to seeing on CSX stuff. I didn't check the prototype to see if that's accurate. I would assume it probably is. Uh, Scale Trains definitely goes through all of the work to make sure that is prototypically accurate. Um, so it's nice to have something a little different on the CSX side. They generally always have those heavy ballast uh, trucks on them. So cool to see that. Also, just like uh, everything else, has a slightly different antenna up top there. My light is washing it out a little bit. Let's see if we, there we go. So that's cool, prototypical detail, nice to see. And we'll move on to the UP. This was the first UP, like modern era diesel engine that I have added to my layout. And so honestly, this is kind of what I judge everything against when it comes to color. UP is tough. Um, I'm not sure, but this is relatively dull. The ones that I've seen in real life are much shinier and more more glossy in my opinion. So I'm not sure how accurate the color is on this. The one thing that I really like about this, the thing that they really got correct that I see with a lot of, lot of other engines out there is I think more often than not, they, they mold the plastic trucks and then they just let whatever the mold color is be that gray. And I'm curious if they've done a little bit of painting on this because a lot of times you get a little bit of translucent, um, you know, type of look on gray trucks. And, and these really don't have that. They're nice and flat and they look like, you know, legitimately painted trucks like you'd see on an engine. So across the whole bottom of this, all of the, the plastic detailing 
it looks nice and I really like how this gray comes out compared to some of the others. It also matches the paint up top nicely. That's why I think it's probably painted top and bottom. So I like that detail. That's really important to me. I hate that semi translucent plastic look on, on trucks. So um, right on scale trains did a good job there. It's much, much appreciated, especially for the price we're paying for these things. And uh, again, prototypical details up top there, a couple extra grab handles, whatnot. But the one thing that I, I really liked about this when I got it is this Building America scheme. The flag on this thing is very crisp. However they get this, if it's, um, you know, silk screened or whatever they do, the, the flag on this is immaculate. And they did an awesome job getting it to come out nice and crisp. crisp. So, yeah, just something about that. Thought I'd point it out. You really got to get a nice close look at that if you can. It is really nicely put on there. So, all right, that's about all I have for some of the visual details. We kind of went over the nitpicky stuff in my uh, DC DCC reviews. So, now we'll kind of jump into the electronics and dig deep into the usability of these engines. So I bought these off of eBay, and that is one of the downsides of scale trains. Is when when they if you don't pre-order them and they have sold out all of their stock, it's basically impossible to come up with them um, from normal means. They do sell out relatively quick for obvious reasons. They are the highest quality you can really get. So that is one of the downsides is, is coming across these can be difficult. But I verified when I bought all of these that they were new in box. Uh, you can usually tell from the wheels how much wear is on an engine um they they get that first layer of oxide kind of taken off pretty quickly so you can tell i'm relatively certain that these were all new in box when i got the up and the csx on my layout i was honestly a little unimpressed when i first got started the the runnability with other engines was not there um and Quite honestly, compared to, say, the Broadways, the Dash 9s from Scale Trains, and all of my other sound locomotives, these really fell short when it came to the Prime Mover sound. And before I got upset, I kind of started to do a little bit of looking around, and I didn't find any information. So I figured I would reach out and uh, ask Scale Trains if they had any, uh, any response to this, and they did eventually email me back and and helped me out according to scale trains moving forward all of these engines will be just like the dash nine so future releases um on the bottom there will be holes drilled out for the speakers so there is more air movement and better better volume i honestly wasn't having a whole lot of issues with the volume i felt that the horn and the bell were all satisfactory and and plenty loud enough so I reached out to them and, and asked if there was a way to turn up the uh, the prime mover volume without using a a lock uh, lock programmer because at the time I didn't have one. And so honestly, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Going through the lock programmer, I couldn't actually find an easy way to change just the prime mover setting. But uh, my personal opinion is if you want these to to run with other engines and have adequate sound, the prime mover needs to be set to its maximum volume. And uh, so the first thing I would do upon getting one of these, um, most people are gonna be running NCE or whatever. Uh, and at the time I was running a Digitrax, but f for the most part, you're going to want to set CV31 to 16 and then CV32 to one and that's going to unlock the uh, the extended programming for these. So CV259 can then be adjusted from 0 to 20, 128. I went ahead and changed CV259 all the way up to 128. And now I am satisfied with the amount of prime mover volume that I get from these. So that is the first thing that I think everybody should do is go ahead and adjust the prime mover volume. Now I've got the uh, 2022 sitting on the track right now and power going to it and we are going to just 
take the mute off, and you're going to hear the, the startup sequence. Not terribly loud compared to other engines, but I do understand that because these uh, these new Tier 4s, they do tend to run a bit quieter compared to other engines. They still have that deep chug, like if you're, if you're next to one in real life, you can feel, you know, the engine. But the, the high pitch volume and the exhaust, you know, the pressure coming out of the end of the exhaust pipe creating the loud sound just is not the same as it is on the older Gvos and Dash 9s and whatnot. So, frankly, just in real life, these engines run quieter. So, on layout, they're going to be a little bit quieter. These two engines are set up in the stock configuration when it comes to how the prime mover functions. And these are set up in a custom way that I have I have changed. These three I can verify are version 4 and this may possibly be a version 5. This can have some slight changes depending on where you're at, but I will try to get into that when we actually look at the computer screen and start going over it. So from the factory, these come with, uh, I believe it's called full throttle. And uh, the way it works is if you press function nine, it essentially stops the, the throttle input from adjusting the speed of your engine and completely allows you to adjust prime mover volume or not, excuse me, volume, uh, prime mover speed. So it allows your engine to notch up. Now this has some interesting uses. Um, what you can do is you can get the engine moving and press F9 and then you can actively control which notches your engines in that consist run at, as long as all of them are full throttle capable. So basically any lock sound, you know, version four, version five with that, uh, with that capability set up on function nine because you'll want them all running on the same function. This is a really cool feature. It, it really does work well when coupled with other scale trains engines. The other thing you should be aware of is I have found that it is easier to make this function work if you change your CV126. And when you pull up CV126 from the factory, it will be set at 20. And what that means is you have a quantity of four of that is to set the uh, the throttle up feature and the other 16 of that is for I believe it is the wheel sensor um, I don't know if that works on N scale but it is on this and, and set up from the factory so you'll have a, a factory value of 20 I take that and set it to zero for all of these and what that does is essentially gets rid of the the engine spooling up before you move and for some reason, amongst all of these being slightly different vintages, they don't all spool up at the same rate. So even if you have your CV3 and CV4 set at the same value, which I use 20 across the board as your acceleration and deceleration rate, they all kind of tend to take off at a different period of time. So it makes it difficult to get a bunch of engines and consist moving all at once. So I just get rid of that feature, I set it at zero, and then all of the acceleration rates are the same for all the engines. Also, if you just turn on your layout, all of the engines have to go through their startup phase. Uh, if these are in consist with, say, a Dash 9 or some other engine that's running a lock sound and you're using that full throttle feature, not all of them have the same amount of time for startup phase. So some engines will start moving before the others and 
it's just one of those things that if you get rid of it, it makes these working cons just a bunch better with other engines. So that's the second thing I would do. So when using the full throttle feature, you can do some cool things. Like you can have the engines at stop, you can pull them up to whatever, notch eight if you want to, if you're pulling a heavy engine, and you can lightly tap the function nine on and off, and you use the acceleration settings to slowly let the train speed up and slow down. In N scale, it works okay. I think this is really more of a feature for, I don't know, HO scale stuff. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue. Sometimes these have trouble pulling things, uh, big long consists. So yes, the feature works. However, it just, it's a little bit finicky. And it also makes it really hard to get the engine set at a specific speed. Um, because your throttle is at a high value, you can't actually tell, you know, what throttle step you're actually on when you use that feature. So I left these two engines that way just for, uh, just for showing the, the capabilities. The other thing that you get when you leave it set up like this is DPU mode, and DPU mode is pretty cool. It allows you to just by pressing, uh, I believe it is function five. Yeah, function five sets the engine up in DPU mode, and it essentially what it does is it, if you were running the engine in the center of the the consist a mid train dpu you just turn all the lights off including function seven for your for your or excuse me function six for your headlights and uh ditch lights and it would all function as it should however if you wanted it at the end of the train you can turn off your headlights and turn on function five for dpu mode and what it does is it sets up your rear tail light to glow dimly and i'll see if i can get that here I don't know if you can quite see it there, but there we are. Just a nice dim glow on the rear tail light. You turn off DPU mode and it's off. So that's cool. If you run the engine at the back of the train, you'll have a nice dim trailing light. So that's cool. Awesome feature. Love that. I wish that was standard on a lot of engines. It, it really does look good and, and it works flawlessly. So awesome feature there. So now let's step away from the stock configuration and, and start talking about why I changed these over to a different type of config. And let's go ahead and just mute 2022 there. 3370 and 2570, I, I tried to do a custom configuration and this is substantially easier on older uh, lock sound version fours. The the new version fives, I'm still working out a good way to get it to work. Matter of fact, the project engine I was talking about, the 8987 um, SD70 Mac that I'm putting a lock sound five in, I'm trying to get this function to work properly on it. So that will be part of my uh, empty wallet Wednesday and we'll get into how to configure that properly. Um, I think I've got it, but it, it is slightly different on those. Something that I wish ESU would maybe come out with is um, instead of having these as two separate things, manual notching and full throttle, I wish that the full throttle button actually toggled you between the two modes. So when you activated full throttle, you could use it as it is intended. You can adjust the, the throttle knob and, and your engine would notch up and notch down. And then if you turned it off, Function 5 and Function 6 would function like other decoders. So uh, Function 5 notches you up and Function six, 6 notches you down. The reason why this is important and I wish that was a feature is you're not always running scale trains engines in consist with one another. And say you hooked this engine up to my other um, DCC Jivo. If you were to start, if you turned on function nine, so you're in full throttle mode and you started moving the throttle to change the uh, the notch setting of this engine, the other engine in consist that doesn't have full throttle mode is trying to race off the tracks. 
And that really limits the usability of these because they're stuck working with other full throttle engines or they're basically just idling because generally I run my engines pretty slow so they're not, not notched up. And I really like to be able to, especially when doing videos and whatnot, be able to work through all my notches, have my full range of sounds available to me. So that's what I did with these engines. I went ahead and adjusted some of their CVs, um, or I should say their function mapping, to make the diesel notch up function work. And we're going to take a look at that really quick like here. And I will say that since I have done that, these do run flawlessly with my Broadways and other engines in Consys. So this is definitely something you should consider doing. And I wish ESU would do, like I said, just have it toggle between the two modes. That would be awesome. It would make these things a way better value. So ESU, if you're listening to me or scale trains, if you have the ability to do this, please, it would make these things so much better. Okay, so bear with me. I am uh, recording my computer screen because I don't have a good way to output um, my computer screen to my phone. So... A couple things that had to be changed. Function 5 and Function 6 are, are not what they normally are here. Uh, function 6 is usually what I have set up as Function 7, and this is your ditch light control. Forward dictates that when the engine is moving forward and F7 is activated, your ditch lights turn on. Go ahead and just take whatever you have right here in Function 6 and essentially just copy and paste it. This can be slightly different whether or not you have alternating or solid uh, ditch lights. It's easiest just to go ahead and uh, copy and paste. And then over here in your logic functions, just go ahead and get rid of everything and uh, zero it out for the time being. Function 5 was your DPU mode. I, I just went ahead and got rid of that. These engines I will more than likely never run at the end of the end. Um, at the end of the train, if you wanted it, you can just add another function down here and set it up as function, you know, 28 or something like that. And uh, you could use that if you wanted it to. This is pretty easy in the lock programmer. However, you wanted to do that. If you wanted that feature, you could just add it somewhere. So what I did is function five now becomes diesel notch up. And in a version four decoder, this is out and easy to find. If you click this, there's a drop down menu and it says diesel notch up, diesel notch down. So I got rid of all the physical outputs for function five and six and just changed them to logic functions, notch up, notch down. Uh, I ended up with an open space here because of the way uh, they had the functions set up. So I went ahead and changed this to stop and F0. So when the uh, engine is, whether F0 is on or not, if the engine is stopped, it tries to automatically dim the headlight. So now these engines function just like all my TCS uh, decoders. At stop, the lights automatically dim. When you turn the throttle up, they automatically come up to bright. I tried to get the ditch lights to function with this so they shut off when in the uh, parked position. I couldn't quite get the logic functions to work out, so I found it was just easier just to leave it as function 7 and turn them off. Again, if you want DPU, go ahead and just add it as a function down here. Not that big a deal. Um, I removed it from function 5, so I had diesel notch up. These engines are generally, uh, generally lead engines, so not that big a deal for me. Both of my UP and my CSX are set up like this. Now, this particular setup is only for version four lock sound profiles. And changing this without a lock programmer is next to impossible. I wouldn't even try. So keep that in mind when buying these. If you want them to run with other engines, you're probably gonna need to look into a lock programmer to change the full throttle mode or just be okay with them essentially running at, you know, notch one to three because most people probably don't run their engines that much faster. They will automatically uh, throttle up as load happens. There is a CV in here that allows you to change that. I don't necessarily mess with it. I think if I am running them in standard mode, these engines throttle up to load as they probably should. So I find that to be okay. 
my version five stuff, um, you have to actually change uh, your function 28. And function 28, I end up moving to function nine so it's easier to get to on a standard remote. I get rid of the full throttle feature. I move function 20 up the eight to the function nine and that is your diesel notch up, diesel notch down, manual button. And then they have a different name for your notch up, notch down. I wanna say it's function, they call it function three and function four or something like that. But I'll get into that more in depth when we go to the dash nines and after I have a good working prototype on that SD70 Mac that I'm gonna start working on an empty wallet Wednesday. So look for that information in the future, but for good runnability, Take a screenshot of this. This is how I set them up and it has been flawless ever since I have made the changes on these engines. One thing I forgot to mention is when you change these over to the function five, function six manual notching, um, depending on the system you are using to control it, uh, if five and six are not momentary uh, functions, they do not just notch. So if it is a constant on, constant off type situation, so permanent, uh, which I think my Digitrack systems always were, the the logic of the lock sound fours, and I haven't played with these on the lock sound fives yet, so I can't attest to this, but if you press five and it stays on, it will take the engine all the way up to full throttle and vice versa. You press six, it'll bring the engine all the way back down to idle or notch one, depending on if you're running the engine or not. So um, if that's the case, you'll want to double tap the, the button to go up one notch on say like Digitrack systems or something like that, unless you want it to just go all the way up to full throttle. On say the ESU systems, when you make the engine profiles, you can adjust whether every function is momentary or not. And that's what I did on these. They're all set up to be momentary, so every time you press function five, it notches it up one. Every time you press function six, it notches it down one. So they function just like the broadways would. Just keep tapping five to go all the way up to full throttle. And in consist with them, 100% functionality. These things run great. As for the decoders on these, I have had zero issues. Um, some of my lock pilot ones I have mentioned in the past have had issues with. These lock sound ones are definitely a more premium decoder and I have had zero issues with these. They have no problem with pickup, although uh, recently this one started to have a little bit of a hiccup here and there, a little bit of Atlas uh, conduct lube on the wheel to pick up, uh, wheel pickup interface. All that went away, everything functions as it should, so Something to be noted, probably every once in a while you want to add a little bit of conductor lube on there just to make sure you're getting good con uh, electrical connection. But other than that, these things run flawlessly. They must have some sort of capacitance like the Broadways do, or they do have a little bit of a stay alive on them. They can handle pretty dirty track and be flawless. They go through turnouts like they should. I don't have derailments with these. They're just excellent engines. The only downside to these is the stupid couplers, although I am having better luck with this one with these newer black couplers. I'm not sure if that's actually a thing or not, but I can attest that this one has been much better with some of my other rolling stock. So I'll just put that out there. Might just be a placebo. I just happened to notice it on this engine. Um, yeah, honestly, they are some of the best premium engines you can get. And I really, really love the sound on these. Let's um, quickly, before I uh, let go of the sound here, I'm going to turn on the track power and we're going to switch to 2022. These have some of the best sounds out there. We already ran the engine up and it they do, they really sound good. The one thing about this engine that I love, oops, had the throttle up there. Forward horn, reverse horn. That is something about the lock sound ecosystem that's great, is you can get some really, really good sound files, and these all have excellent sound files. As a matter of fact, 
some of them sound even a little different from one another. These, uh, these Jeevos back here sound just like this one. And this one right here has a little bit more of a knock. It has a slightly different sound profile to it. So I don't know if it's taken from different engines or different periods of time. But even amongst, you know, the same, same engines from scale trains, you get different sound profiles and, and slightly different, uh, well, slightly different engine sounds depending on uh, what engine the uh, recordings were taken from. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, just went over how the horn was different on this. We can jump to uh, 37, 56. Sounds totally different yet. You can actually get on and adjust all these if you wanted to. It's just one of those things when it comes to sound, Lock Sound really has it locked up. They they do. They have some of the best sounds out there. So when you're paying the the roughly two hundred and twenty five to two hundred and fifty dollars for these sound engines you really are paying for a premium product. So that's something that has to be has to be remembered here. And since we're gonna talk about price, the newer Paragon 4 Broadways were kind of my standard for sound engines. And they come in at about $225 for the new ones. And so if you can get these at that $225 price point, keep in mind that the SD70 Aces and these are two separate different engines. Um, but honestly, these do have a better value for what you get. They're nicer quality engines. I, I don't know that the, the actual internals are nicer on these, but they run just as smooth. They, they have better sound, in my opinion, and they look... The detail that you get on these for roughly the same price is, you know, you, you get more value. And uh, and so I would really recommend these. Now, you need a good SD70 Ace. Paragon 4 is the way to go. I'm really interested to see the scale trains, uh, Fox Valley, um, when those start to come out. As a matter of fact, I have one pre-ordered. I'm really hoping to compare those and see how the price to performance on those works. But... The only downside to these is the, the prime mover sound. And it has nothing to do with the actual sound quality coming from these engines. It's just the Tier 4 Jeevos are so much quieter, you almost can't hear them running in consist with other engines. Now, if you want the horn and all that kind of stuff, uh, the, the coupler on these is top-notch like that is best in the business there is no other sound out there that i've found that has the sound files are just better on these uh and a couple of uh soundtracks that i played with these absolutely have higher quality than them. but this is that thing i was running into is if you can't hear the prime mover that's kind of what you're Kind of what you're out there looking for. The DCC being almost a hundred dollars cheaper really makes you wonder: Is that hundred bucks for the sound worth it? And in my case, where I have multiples of these and I want to run them in concert together, yes, I, I do think that it is worth that two hundred fifty dollars. But I'm not the average person. I'm reviewing these, and I have a very large roster of engines. And so that changes the, the situation a little bit. If you were trying to run this with other engines and you didn't have access to a lock programmer, I would tell you that these are not worth that extra $100. I would just go ahead and get the DCC version. Um, you could always add a speaker and, and a, you know, a lock sound decoder to it at some time in the future if you wanted to. It would add a premium to the engine for sure, but if you don't already have a lot of sound locomotives, I don't know if this actually uh, justifies that $100 price. If, if you could access the manual notching from the factory and you didn't need that extra $150 lock programmer, this changes that substantially. So 
Maybe with the next release, if they did what I said, where you function nine swap between manual notching and full throttle, that would be a total game changer and it would absolutely make these engines worth their price point. So I'm going to have a little bit of a so-so answer to this. Yes, absolutely worth that $250 price point. You can't beat these engines. However, if you're an intermediate guy and you don't have a lot of other lock sound locomotives or you don't have a lock programmer and or you want to run these in consist with other you know, standard DC engines, I would probably just opt for the DCC. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Been a bit of a lengthy review. Hopefully, I gave you guys some good information. Um, I will see you this Monday. I have... A lot more work to do on this layout, so hopefully we can get some detailing done. And uh, hopefully this Wednesday we're going to start work on that SD70 Mac. I've done some testing on it, so hopefully I can uh, get the computer hooked up and show you guys what I've been going through. And we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys stopping by. And if you appreciate what I do, please consider support on Patreon. There's a lot of money sitting right here, and this all comes out of pocket, so... If you'd like to support me, please do, and have a good rest of your weekend. Bye now.